Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we welcome back Adrian Forza from Crypto Tax Australia. How are you going, mate? Good, thanks Alex. How are you? Yeah, really good and I'm pretty excited to get back into the tax stuff today because we've got a few different stories of good and bad outcomes as we approach June 30 to try and help people get their uh, tax in order as you guys um, help. And there's also the data matching the ATO have come out with, so there's plenty to talk about today. But uh, what's been happening in the world of tax lately? Look, there, you know... There's, there's been a lot of uh, sort of changes and, and a lot of private rulings and things that have come out lately, um, which is really good to see. Um, it brings a lot of sort of uh, practicality to some of the issues that people are, are having because, you know, we are still sort of in the Wild West um, yeah. of crypto at the moment. So, um, you know, there's a lot of items such as um, the hard forks. Um, there's even a private ruling <clears throat> that came out about uh, staking as well. So, you know, similar to, to NEO and gas and all that sort of thing. So it's good to see that the ATO is starting to clarify some of these issues so people actually know, you know, how, how to sort um, all these issues out. Yeah, it was a real scramble when there's a new technology to try and, you know, get these you know, classifications written or whatever it was. So the more uh, classification, the better. So what are some of the tips and things that people have learnt from last year? Because the idea of getting this video up in, in early June is so people to maybe help themselves out and change their position yep. before June 30. Yep, yep. So the one thing I wanted to touch on was um, I had a, a number of clients come to me in, in February and they talked about, uh, you know, this is going to be an easy tax year because I'm just sitting on losses. I haven't really bought anything. And I said to them, look, you know, the year's not over. We've still got four or five months to go and anything can happen. And as we saw uh, from February, we've sort of skyrocketed up again and, and there's created a lot of interest and um, a lot of clients said, you know, I'm starting to buy back in or, you know, they've made different trades. There's, there's certain um, coins that have done really well um, over that period. And something you really need to be careful of, of is, um, you know, especially if you're an investor, that... You might have bought, you know, um, and made some money along the last three, four months and locked in those profits maybe in Australian dollars or, or in Tether or in Bitcoin. Um, so you've made you know, a capital gain on paper. And what you want to be mindful of is uh, when you're doing your tax return, you might have actually other coins in your portfolio that you may have bought a while ago um, that you know, you thought was gonna, we're going to do well or there, there were some ICOs that you invested in um, uh, and we know how that sort of turned out, um, you know, for most of them anyway. Um, so you might want to look at reshuffling your por portfolio, starting fresh, you know, we might, you know, hopefully crypto winter's over now um, and potentially lock in some of those losses to offset some of the gains that you may have had over the last few months, um, particularly... You know, a lot of people may have been sitting in uh, Tether or some other USD um, stable coins. And, and as we know, the, the AUD USD price has actually um, fallen. So, you know, you may be sitting on a, a potential gain there as well, which you probably don't realize. Yeah, and I guess we should highlight this all depends on your individual circumstances. So there's big differences between whether you're a trader, investor, using crypto in business and personal use and all these things. So guys, seek uh, professional help and uh, clarification. Don't just try and make up uh, your own mind if you're not an expert. Yeah, and that's that's really the big bugbear at the moment. Um, you know, the whole trader versus investor is a bit of a, still a bit of a gray area. Um, and you need to really look over the whole, your whole personal circumstances in terms of that, even though, you know, you may have done 500 trades during the year, doesn't necessarily mean that you're a trader for tax purposes. Um, you know, just because you you applied for an ABN doesn't necessarily mean that you tick the box and, you know, you're a trader now. And I, I always sort of keep coming back to the separation between the two and, you know, you may have some long-term holdings, that's fine, and you may have your trading account, but make sure you just keep separate wallets, separate exchanges, um, you know, don't mix and match. If you're trading on margin and you've got your long-term holdings there, don't use your long-term holdings as collateral um, and vice versa because it can get really messy and it all comes back to, you know, intention and keeping that separation because 
at the end of the day, if, if you want to make sure that you claim that you know 50% discount, um, you don't want it to get mixed mixed and matched with your trading account later on. And and as I said, you know, audit trails are the biggest importance um, when it comes to tax time. And you know, the ATO has now come out with uh, the data matching. Um, you know, talking obviously um, getting data from the Australian exchanges, which um, you know, I, I, I spoke to clients about probably a year ago. This eventually was going to happen. Um, you know, the ATO is looking at that. They're just waiting. They're waiting until people lodge all their 2018 returns and probably some of their 19 returns to see what um, taxpayers are doing and if they're actually declaring that. And, you know, going back, there's always an audit trail unfortunately so there's always a, a deposit to a withdrawal and the biggest the biggest headwind i've found over the last year or so is clients not remembering where they've actually moved money around you know the, sometimes you might have 10 different exchanges and uh you know not remembering where some of these withdrawals have gone or where the deposit has, has come from and that's understandable understandable because you know we might be talking 18 months ago um so it's it's really really important to you know every time you might do a deposit or withdrawal or you've invested in an ico um or used your cryptocurrency for, for personal use just note it down you know piece of paper or on an excel spreadsheet just so when it comes to tax time you know where all of your um all of your uh, cryptocurrency is gone and you also remember which exchanges you've used even if you've used one you know used them for once or twice or whatever it might be um it's really important because it's very hard to remember 18 months ago yeah for those that haven't heard about the data matching it's basically they can collect all your personal information from the australian exchanges and i wasn't aware that this was the law but apparently this does apply to you know shares and these sort of investing things so if you've been you know taking lots of profits and into your bank account and not declaring a tax, you're going to get caught, guys. It's on the blockchain uh, there forever. So we always knew this was coming. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's the other thing. You know, even though we love how the blockchain operates, it is there forever, especially something like uh, Bitcoin, you know, um, whether or not, you know, private implementation gets um, put in place in the, in the coming years or whatever it might be, but it's always there. Um, and, you know, you, ha you have... Uh, software companies like Chain, Chain Analysis that are doing these sort of things, you know, they're already working with the IRS um, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, eventually you will know whose is who um, to a certain degree, I, I, I'd imagine. Um, but yeah, it's just, just be mindful. And you of do that. have to prove your innocence, don't you? So even if you think you're using a privacy coin, if you, 100 grand shows up in your bank account, and they say, well, where did you invest in that initially? Where'd you get that from? You know, you've got to be able to explain yourself, don't you? That, that's right. That's right. And, you know, I, I see a lot of people talking on Facebook and thing and, and and Twitter saying, well, the ATO can come and work out my game. But, you know, the ATO, how a review and audit works is if you can't prove uh, what you've done, the ATO will just issue an assessment and then it's up to you to prove the ATO wrong, basically. Yeah, I think a lot of people have got a bit more clarity now compared to, in 2017, it was just chaos. A lot of people jumped into this space and they didn't really know if they were a trader or investor. I think now a lot of people have worked out, well, hey, you know, I want to have my Bitcoin as a long-term holding and take, you know be the beneficiary of that capital gains discount after 12 months. And other people have got their little trading account. It's just on the one exchange. So I think people are starting to get a bit more organized than they were during that chaos. Definitely. I, th I think definitely. Uh, uh, the biggest thing is education that I find, um, educating clients about you know what you can do, um, you know how you can sort of organize it, what the tax benefits and... Um, are as well and you know we've got so many stories of good and bad stories of clients um you know we had a number of, of clients that come to us uh where they've done their own calculations and uh you know through some softwares and whatever it might be and and they said look i've got a hundred thousand dollar capital gain you know what can i do about it you know because uh, i haven't made that that money you know portfolio wise so we reviewed that. We went through all these transactions. We went through a, 
a bit of a, a questionnaire and a review about whether or not he could fall into the trader category and and luckily enough um he did and you know that turned around to be a twenty thousand dollar refund in um instead of the hundred thousand dollar capital gain so you know you can go out and, and work everything through yourself but sometimes little items like that um can make a huge difference if you if you speak to someone that knows what they're doing yeah exactly and there's a range of criteria you do need to meet and i guess if you are in that bad situation where you have lost a lot of money in crypto, some people think, oh, I'm just not going to worry about it. I haven't made any money. But again, you can lock in those capital losses for the following year if you're planning on making money in the future in cryptocurrency. So it's still important to do that as well. That's right. That's right. And then it comes back to the trader versus an investor. So if you are a trader and you have lost money, um, you know you can reduce that that loss against your other income and get a, a get a greater refund and that also includes um, miners as well um, which we probably seen a lot of them have got a big capital expense um, you know up front and and working through all that to making sure that you know they, they're getting deductions that they can and I guess the personal use one is always one that's hotly debated on social media and I saw someone the other day come out saying you know you can you can use any amount now or something crazy but uh, <coughs> it's pretty clear cut isn't it it's sort of that intention if you have a small amount on a wallet for a reasonably short period of time and you spend it that's kind of how personal use works yeah th th that's right and and you know the longer that you hold it um the more it's going to look like an investment but i was speaking to a client recently and uh, they've got a coin jar uh, uh, uh swipe card, card yeah swipe card yeah. yeah and the only purpose for that swipe card is to spend your bitcoin you know you don't use a coin jar card to store your cryptocurrency you know you use a ledger or a treasure or, or something like that to actually store it so an instance there is if you transfer over a thousand dollars let's just say and you start using that for everyday purposes well that can be seen as a personal um use of that asset of, of, of your bitcoin or whatever it might be because it's specifically tailored for that use um, if that makes sense. Yeah, I guess you run the risk there because it might go down 80%, but it might go up a little bit. But uh, I guess Correct. It's, all, it's all relevant really. So um, anything else to touch on, Adrian? I just wanted to reiterate again, again, you know, from our last videos is about buying cryptocurrency and sending it to other people on their behalf. You know, if we really want this to go mainstream, you know, we want to ensure that we try and get as many people on board, understanding the technology, you know, getting their own exchange, uh, you know, buying cryptocurrency and sending it to someone else. Number one, uh, messes up a lot of your records. And, you know, you might have said, you know, a friend of mine gave me cash, you know, to buy it and then I sent it to him. Well, you know, where's the proof there? You know, because the, if the HA looks at your records, they're going to say, well, no, you're the one that bought it. It's in your account. Um, you know, and, and then you need to have that argument there. You just want to avoid that. Um, and, and again, you you want people to get into this space to actually start understanding how it all works as well. So the, be the best thing is to actually sit down with them, um, you know, go through how to open in, up, up an exchange, how to use a wallet, all those sorts of things, security and all that and all that sort of stuff. So um, at least it, it has that separation between you and that other person later on yeah we have done a deeper dive last year we did go more into the maybe individual characteristics of a trader and investor and that sort of thing guys so that tax video is up last year but i wanted to keep this a bit shorter and sharper as a bit of a um, refresher and um, adrian does a great job and he has a discount uh, for all our followers as well so any final thoughts today adrian the the, the final one which probably uh touches home a little bit is uh I just wanted to talk about estate planning because I don't see many people talking about that um, in the crypto space. And it's really about, you know, in the event of, you know, that you can't, uh, you know, you, you, you become mentally capacitated or you pass away. Um, and it's really important, you know, especially if you've got a family, let's just say, you know, a husband and wife where the husband's doing all the trading and the husband's got all the investments and, you know, touch wood something happens and, and they pass away who has access to those private keys or who has a backup to those because if you you know if you pass away 
and no one's got your keys, we know that you can't access that crypto later on. Yeah. So it's really important to have some sort of backup. Give it to someone that you, you can trust or, you know, your wife or a family member or a really, really close friend that has, um, you know, your keys. Uh, keys. And also think about have you updated your will? Because if you've got a substantial amount of money um, in cryptocurrency and you obviously want to pass it on with all of your, your other assets in your estate. So just think about that, you know, if, you, if you've if you seen a lawyer, um, you know, you should always have a will regardless anyway. Um, but just think about those sort of things because it's really important, you know, if you really want, you know, your funds to go to someone, you need to obviously leave you know, instructions at least of how to get that that um, that crypto out of there. Very important, probably something that uh, we often forget as well. But um, thanks for joining us today, Adrian. I'll put the links in the description below. And uh, yeah, thanks for giving all our guys a discount for doing their tax with you. Great. Thanks a lot, Eggs. Appreciate Cheers, it.